Srimad Bhagavatam, the sixth canto, fifth chapter. Uh, Narada Muni cursed by the Japadi Daksha, verse number 12. Eka eva svaras turiho bhagavan svaraya paraham tamadrishva bhavam kumsa kimmasat karmabir bhavet. Narada Muni said that there is a kingdom where there is only one male. The Hayasvas realized the purport of his statement. The only enjoyer is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who observes everything everywhere. He is full of six opulences and fully independent of everyone else. He is not subject to the three modes of material nature, for he is always transcendental to this material creation. The members of human society do not understand him, the Supreme, through their advancement in knowledge and activities, but simply work very hard like cats and dogs all day and night for temporary happiness. What will be the benefit of their activities? <clears throat> Narada Muni had mentioned a kingdom where there is only one king with no competitor complete spiritual world and specifically the cosmic manifestation has only one proprietor or enjoyer the supreme personality of godhead who is beyond this material manifestation <clears throat> so it has therefore been described as turiya existing on the fourth platform he has also been described as abhava the word bhava means means takes birth comes from the word bu to be as stated in Bhagavad Gita 819, Bhutva Bhutva Paliyate. The living entities in the material world must be repeatedly born and destroyed. The Supreme Personality of God, however, is neither Bhutva nor Paliyate. He is eternal. In other words, he is not obliged to take birth like human beings or animals, which repeatedly take birth and die because of ignorance of the soul. Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is not subjected to such changes of body, and one who thinks otherwise is considered a fool. Abhajante, Mambudha Manusim Tanam Astritam. Narada Muni advises that human beings not waste their time simply jumping like cats and monkeys without real benefit. The duty of the human being is to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Om Agyam Timirandasya Gena Jena Salataya Chaksu Unnavitam Yenatas Mai Shri Gadavena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nir Visesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine one shikalpa taru bischa, kripa sindhu pe bacha, patita nam pavane bhyo, vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha, jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda, sri advaita gadadara, srivasadi gaur bhakti rindam, hare krishna, hare krishna, krishna krishna, hare hare, hare rama, hare rama, rama rama, hare hare. So just to recap a little bit, Narada Muni has produced, he is a, I'm not sorry, not, not Muni, but the Daksha, the Japati Daksha, has produced 25,000 young men, who are the Hayashvas. And um, his job is to help bring about the, the next creation by, by producing many living entities. So he has done that. Now he sends them out at a certain age to go to holy places to purify themselves and then come back and to become like him, householders, which will help propagate the uh, population. Uh, but Arda Muni is seeing something else. He intercepts them and he questions them where they're going and why they're going. 
And uh, now he begins, and a few verses back, he speaks this analogy of different aspects of existence, both spiritual and material, in a very um, uh, analogous form. <clears throat> and in that analogy, analogy he, uh, he uh, mentions different things. He says, uh, my dear Hayashvas, uh, you have not seen the extremities of the earth. There's a kingdom where only one man lives, and there's a hole in which, having entered, no one emerges. A woman who is there, who is extremely unchaste, adorns herself with various attractive dresses. And a man who lives there is her husband. In that kingdom, there's a river flowing in both directions. A wonderful hole made of 25 materials, a swan that vibrates sounds, an automatically revolving object makes made of sharp razors and thunderbolts. You have not seen all this, and therefore you're inexperienced boys without any advanced knowledge. How then will you create Rajani? So now he speaks in a very analogous way. So now in this verse that we are here, we're getting one of the meanings of the analogy, and that's there's a kingdom of one male. And that kingdom is the spiritual world, where the only enjoyer is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, um, Prabhupada goes into describing the, uh, you can bring up the verse again. No need to keep this particular section up. <clears throat> um, yeah, right there. Uh, he, he explains that the, this, uh, this person is not subject to change like we are subject to change. He is not subject to birth nor death, and he um, conducts everything in this world and at the same time is not part of this world. <laughs> but he ends by describing that, you know, the human form of life is not simply to uh, work hard, nayam deho deho bhajan nirloka and kastan karma arati vid bhujan ye tupo dipyam tu put kudyena sadvam brahma sokam narantam that this material, that this, that this this human form of life is not meant to work hard like cats and dogs, and hogs and pigs, who simply labor simply to get food and have sex life. Uh, that's not the purpose of life, because that's what the animals do, and they do it quite good. In fact, when the human beings try to imitate the animals, they look quite ridiculous because they are not meant to act like that, they, they have higher intelligence and they have a body that is designed for to engage in practical spiritual activities where the cats, the dogs, the pigs, the animals cannot do that. And therefore they're simply, um, they simply are engaged in bodily activities. That's all they can do. But if a human acts like that, then as it says here, they, they, then they're wasting that human form of life without any real benefit. So here he's giving a little insight in this first analogy. Learn about that person who is from this kingdom that you are not even aware of. And if you're going to do this service of, of doing progeny, creating progeny, you have to know this. Otherwise, you will be simply... Uh, mindless in your activities and not be able to develop beyond a certain point. So he's, he's chastising them in a very mild way by giving them good instructions. This is the duty of a saintly person. A saintly person can see ahead of time what is the future of the conditioned souls as they engage in material activities. And he warns them that if you continue in the same direction, you will be headed for oblivion, you will suffer unnecessarily, and you'll be wasting your resources, your time, and your energy, and your life. Prabhupada gives the example of how the, uh, the great sages actually instruct people, and he uses a little analogy. There's a man who is sitting on the branch of the tree, and he's, he's sawing the branch on the inside, and then this, uh, his friend comes along and says, oh, 
what are you doing? He said, well, I'm sawing this branch. He said, if you keep sawing, the branch is going to break and you're going to fall to the ground and get hurt. He says, who are you? How do you know all of this? I don't, I don't think, I don't believe you. And so the person can't do anything. He walks away. The man keeps sawing and then he falls on the ground and then he gets shaken up. He runs to his friend. He said, how, how did you know that? How did you know that that would happen? Who are you? You know, but the uh, great souls, the, the persons who are endowed by Krishna, save the conviction souls can see past, present, and future, both by their experience and by the by the direction of the supreme personality of Godhead. So they warn the conditioned souls: don't waste time. Don't act simply like animals, simply to satisfy the senses, which are never satisfied anyway. The more you try to satisfy the senses, the more they become unsatisfied. Because the senses can never be satisfied by sense objects. They can only be satisfied when they're engaged in transcendental activities. And so um, these great souls, they travel around the earth. They, some of them you can recognize and some of them you can't recognize. Some of them look like uh, madmen who simply have no connection with anything, but they are the most wisest of all persons. Just like we have the example in these the, the Shastras of um, the, um, the, Pyth uh, the, uh, the Python man. Uh, it's mentioned in the 11th canto where uh, Prahlad Maharaj is traveling and he sees this man. He's simply laying in one place. He's very fatty and he's laying in place, one place he doesn't move. And he can see by understanding the bodily symptom, uh, bodily construction of this person that he's a great soul. Because there is a science called physiognomy. Physiognomy means studying the bodily parts of a person and understanding actually uh, their position in relationship to their karma. So there's a great science. If you read the Garuda Purana, you can uh, go deeper into this physiognomy. And it can it, it explains in very detail the different parts of the body of a person and how those bod bodily parts are shaped and how they're colored in so many ways. Just like when Sugadev Goswami walked into the uh, assembly of great sages in the midst of Maharaj's Parikshit's uh, renunciation, um, all the great sages immediately could understand from the science of physiognomy that this is a great personality simply by observing his bodily features. And so uh, there are persons like that who are not visible or what we say not um, coming out as great preachers, but they preach by example. And whenever they get a chance and someone is uh, eager to hear, they also give relevant spiritual knowledge. But then again, there are the, the sannyasis, the sannye saints, and other great souls who travel the world, town to town, village to village, country to country, trying to enlighten the conditioned souls. Why waste time simply maintaining your body and the body of your relatives who are also subjected to the same oblivion that your body will be? Why waste time in such things to use your time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and make your life perfect in devotional service? So these persons are actually great. Uh, they, are, they are the supreme manifestation of the mercy of the supreme personality of Godhead. The supreme Lord is always trying to reawaken and bring back the conditioned souls who are suffering in this material world and not knowing why they're suffering. They simply think that sense gratification and material positions will give them uh, happiness and satisfaction. But as time goes on, they become more and more frustrated. And then they simply, uh, what we say, take to sense gratification and as a, as a form of intoxication to overcome their anxiety and all of their suffering due to the to lack of uh, lack of happiness in the material world.
So um, these personalities are great terms. And you'll see here, Narada Muni uses an analogy to make a point. Sometimes you can't speak directly to certain people because they will not be able to understand or they may block what you have to say by not being uh, re receptive. Just like we have the example, Narada Muni did it. Uh, he also did it in the fourth canto with King Prachini Bahishat, where he spoke this analogy about the life of a person who is engaged in fruit of activities and how he is struggling and suffering. Now, King Prachini Bahishat was the person who Narada Muni was speaking about. He was actually speaking about the person he was preaching to. But he used another name. He called he called him King Par Paranjana, and uh, he used another name and he used analogies to make the point of uh, how one is wasting their life trying to simply engage in fruitive activities in order to get some position in the material world. Um, so that's a great if you uh, take some time. It's one of the longer pastimes. It's right at the end of the fourth canto. It takes up a few chapters. Um, where Narada Muni, again, in a very extensive way, uses analogy to help understand. So the scriptures speak in different ways. They give direct statements. They give analogous statements. They give stories. Um, they give uh, examples in history. Just like Uddhava is asking Krishna so many questions on devotional service in the 11th canto. And Krishna is answering, but in some of the cases, Krishna enunciates his answers by, uh, by giving uh, stories that center around the lives of, of personalities, which have the essence of what he's trying to say in this form of someone's life story. So the scriptures come through in different ways to wake us up. So, because um, people are receptive, just like, for instance, the uh, the Vedas, the the actual Vedas, the Rig Veda, the Shama Veda, the Atharva Veda, the Yajur Veda. Everything is there, but who can understand the Vedas? It's very difficult to understand in order to sort out the essence of the Vedic teachings. Therefore, the commentaries on the Vedas, which are called the, um, the Vedas are called the Shrutis, and then we have the Smritis. The Smritis speak about the commentaries on the Vedas, which give a clearer and more relevant understanding, not, not relevant, but more um, easily understandable explanation of what the, the Shrutis are trying to say. Um, because nobody can understand the Vedas directly. And then you have the Puranas, the Itihasas, the Dharma Shastras, and, and the various types of branches of Vedic knowledge coming all the way down to Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. And, um, and then the great Acharyas, they write books on the, on the scriptures to help. There are many stories, just like Bhakti Vinod Thakur has penned a few uh, novels giving the points of spiritual life in a uh, in a, a story form where people will get the message in that way also because a lot of times especially in, in this age people are not inclined to direct philosophical knowledge and they can't even understand it so if you encase something in story form it becomes more easily understandable and the message becomes clear, more and more uh, acceptable so especially in this age, when you speak stories, people are very, their ears start to perk up. And Bhagavatam is full of stories, especially in the 11th canto where Krishna is enunciating his, his answers to uh, Uddhava by telling things in a story-like way, citing historical examples. So somehow or other, we got to get this message across. And that's, that's the business of the great souls, is to think of ways to uh, reach the conditioned souls with this transcendental knowledge. Um, therefore, so many books have been written and so many 
uh, ways to deliver the same thing. Because in spiritual life, there's nothing new. It's not that as time goes on, you learn something new. Or it is something new is coming up. It's already there. But in order for people, because there's a, there's a certain tendency in the conditioned souls, is that when they hear something over and over again, they can become a little bit um, insulated from that. And they don't accept it. And therefore, uh, we take the old time-tested transcendental knowledge and repackage it in different uh, uh, different uh, ways so the conditioned souls will become, oh, here is something new, but it's the same thing. That's all. It's the same thing repackaged. We call it putting uh, uh, old wine in new bottles. That's all. It looks a little, and people think, oh, it's different. Just like I'll give you an example. There was this one story of a prostitute. <laughs> He was a very high class prostitute. And there was one leper. And he wanted to uh, unite with this prostitute, but he couldn't afford uh, her, you know, her charges. She was just like, you know, very, very uh, expensive. So, um, and he had a nice wife, very chaste wife, who took care of him very nicely. But he wanted some relationship with this prostitute. So his wife, feeling little compassion towards her husband's desire, decided to go to the prostitute's house and do some service for the prostitute and ask the prostitute to accept her husband. And um, the prostitute could see that he had a very nice chaste wife and she's really concerned about her husband. And then she was thinking, why is this man coming? He has such a nice wife. And then she decided to teach him a lesson. The prostitute did. So she, she told her, yeah, you can send your husband. So uh, he, uh, he was excited to meet this prostitute. So when he came, she had prepared a feast for him. And she took the items that she prepared and put it in three different types of containers, each item. So she's had all the feast in, in leaf plates, all the feast in, in the porcelain plates and all, all the feast in gold plates. And she served the same feast in three different plates. So the... Uh, the uh, man, the uh, leper, he's thinking, why is she giving me, you know, the same food in three different containers? So he had to ask, you know, he said, you're giving me this feast in three different containers, but they're all the same in each of the containers. And then she revealed her plan. He said, she said to him, you have a nice wife. She's very concerned about you. Why are you wasting time? It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. And so he got the message. So Prabhupada tells that story that the sense gratification, no matter how you package it, it's all the same. You can put it in one type of time you know, you put it in another type of container this container that container package it in this box that box and it. it's the same things and Prabhupada i talked about that you know the, the animals are doing it and the humans think i'm i'm doing it better no it's the same thing there's no difference so this is uh, this is material life and therefore the uh, conditioned souls have to hear this knowledge in different ways. Otherwise, they, they, they think that something new is happening and therefore it's different, but it's all the same. Jan Hare Krishna served the Supreme Personality of Godhead with, with uh, 
with everything you have, with your life, with your resources, with your intelligence, with your words, and um, make your life successful. Worship the Lord, glorify the Lord, serve the Lord, associate with devotees who are doing the same, and go back home, back to God. That's the perfection of life. And all of philosophy and all of the scriptures, which build up thousands of and thousands of warehouses full of books are all the same. Vedais Jaham Eva Veda Vaino, Vedanta Krit Veda Vida Eva Chaham. Just serve Krishna and understand Krishna and ultimately develop your love for Krishna and go back home back to God. That's the conclusion of all Vedic knowledge. And it's summarized in so many different ways, but the, the essence is the same. Krishna is the goal of life. There's no second goal. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, what a wonderful, beautiful, easy to understand, short and sweet messages you have been giving. Thank you. We know the goal of life and yet we deviate. Um, devotees, if you have any questions, any concerns, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Maharaj is here with all of us. Don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Maharaj, again for your class. Hello. Hey, Krishna Maharaj, Dandit Pranam, thank you so much for uh, this wonderful lecture, Maharaj. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> uh, my question is, Maharaj, we hear this uh, regularly, that this material life is meant for uh, realizing God. If we can uh, try to perfect it, that would be best. But there are so many times when we get deluded. How can we... <laughs> yeah, the material world is a place of delusion. Therefore, you have to see through the delusion and understand what is Krishna consciousness and what is what is the delusion or what is that maya. Therefore, there's a the discriminating factor has to be there. And we can understand that through reading the scriptures, from hearing the, from the spiritual masters, or and especially by associating with devotees. And then we we can overcome this this tendency to become bewildered by the by the uh, by allurements of the material energy. And it requires some knowledge to understand the difference between Maya and Krishna. And everything is clear, everything has been said, and everything has been repeated. But somehow or other, because we see through the eye of material happiness, so we're still chasing after these things. And then when we, we get uh, disappointed in chasing after these things, then we realize we were deluded. But it says that one who is actually intelligence can see the results before the activity. This is a quality of a devotee. Before the activity is performed, they, they, they can be able to see the results ahead of time. So when we hear sufficiently from our spiritual masters and ask questions for clarification and for application, and then also associate with devotees who are advanced in Krishna consciousness. And it becomes easy. And there's no question of bewilderment anymore. And then you can see there is, uh, it says that those who worship Lord Nishringadev, he destroys material illusions. One of his qualities is you, you look at something or you, you, uh, you have a tendency towards something. And the Lord will, will, will tell you in your heart, it's not going to make you happy. It's not something you need. And you're just wasting your time. Um, so Krishna is there, and the Lord is there to guide us in the heart, 
The spiritual master there is giving us relevant instructions. So we have sufficient amount of information and knowledge to work with. We have to take advantage of it. And therefore, the process of Krishna consciousness is to learn how to execute devotional service. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Definitely need the mercy of uh, great Vaishnavas like you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. There's so many Vaishnavas that are eager to uh, offer the mercy of Krishna to everyone. We simply have to take it. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for making it sound so simple. Devotees, go ahead and um, switch on your cameras so Maharaj can see you and you can get all his blessings. And don't hesitate to ask questions. He's right here in front of you. We have 65 people online today. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, right. you make it so easy to understand, so everybody understand, and everybody becomes sublime. So, and we all understand, I think, like what you, what's the message? But it's just that we are not able to apply, and we keep failing every time, even after understanding. Take advantage of good association, and that will yes. give you the strength. Hare Krishna, one and with Pranam Guru Maharaj Ji, my sir Jyoti Dakhmehar, I have a question for you. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, Jyoti, okay. Can you hear me, Guru Maharaj Ji? Yeah, I'm, okay, I found you. Yeah, Guru Maharaj Ji, my question is, uh, the more I try, uh, Hare Krishna, can you, can you hear me? I'm listening. Uh, Guru Maharaj Ji, the more I try to serve or more I try to study or more I try to you know uh, progress in my chanting, I, I feel that I am, means I can sense that there is a pride and, uh, and, and the moment I recognize it's a pride, I try to, uh, try to see that uh, I reciprocate to it. Um, and there is a guilt at the end of the day. So both the things are happening. So uh, could you please help me on this to understand? What do you mean by pride? What are you, what are you feeling? Uh, uh, because I found that when I went to uh, book distribution, I was alone. And when it happened, that I was feeling very happy. And uh, That's, Yeah, you should feel happy. But a servant, why a servant should be happy? A servant has to do his job, right? He no, to... yeah. Krishna consciousness is to, is to make you happy. If you're feeling happy, that's that means you're Krishna conscious. <laughs> if you're not happy, you're in Maya. <laughs> uh, because I'm a little attentive, I'm not looking down on others, but it may happen. I'm afraid of that. So that is a pride, right? Well, pride is to say, thank you, Krishna. By your mercy, I was able to uh, distribute this, 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 this knowledge to others. It's because of your mercy, because of the mercy of my spiritual master. So you give credit to Krishna, to your spiritual master, to the devotees who were with you. That's all. It's, that credit is not something artificial. It's not that we're, we're just saying that to feel good. No. In and of ourselves, we are small, but with the mercy of Krishna, we can do wonderful things to spread Krishna consciousness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Faith in the words of the spiritual master. That's why we say all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Why do we say that? It's not just some euphemism. 
it actually means that by the, by the mercy of the great souls, glorious things are happening. But there is a guilt at the end of the day that I am not feeling the way in which you are saying or teaching us. What do you do at the end of the day? You just, what's the last thing you do before you take rest? I write a journal. Hmm? I write a diary, what I have did and what I am not, what I couldn't do. And... Oh, the best way to end the day is with kirtan. You end the day with kirtan, your, the day is perfect. Or if you end the day by reading uh, Srila Prabhupada's Krishna book, or yeah, Krishna book, kirtan, <clears throat> speak with other devotees. Krishna consciousness is a happy process. It's not something long-faced. Uh, do your best to serve. And if you have some success, thank the Lord and uh, ask him to, to continue to give you the mercy so you can keep serving in that way. Everything it depends on mercy. You have to try and your trying attracts the mercy. So if you don't try, the mercy won't come. But even if you, and when you try and the mercy comes, it's the mercy that makes the difference. You look so miserable. What's what's wrong? <laughs> Krishna consciousness is, is nice. <laughs> Chant, dance, take prasad, worship your deity. Tell other, talk to other people about Krishna consciousness, go to the temple, associate with devotees. The process is, is, is susukam kartam avyayam, it's joyful. Even if, you're, uh, even if you still have material desires, still you can find happiness in Krishna consciousness. If you just simply um, Simply engage in devotional service. I have an another question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fire away. Can I ask? Yeah. Uh, problem with intelligent people is that uh, they can see the things and they analyze a lot and that's the reason and there is a duality i mean i'm happy but i'm not able to express it i generally don't express it i'm very concerned about that i don't know why and before coming to krishna consciousness i was like that do you have some do you have a close friend you can talk to in krishna consciousness yeah yeah so she not a friend but very uh, Professional associate, with, not like yeah, so associate with, with devotees who you can feel happy with, who you can share Krishna consciousness. Don't worry about these other people. What about the duality? I'm happy and I feel sad also at the same time. What what is that? I mean, it's beyond understanding of intelligence. Why I feel well, there's, di there's, there's different kinds of explanations for that. If it's material, it's just because uh, I don't know if, it's, if you're feeling happy because you are engaged in devotional service, if you're feeling sad because you, you can't do enough, you want to do more service and you want to do better service, so you're feeling a little happy that your service is not good enough or you don't, you're not giving enough time to Krishna. Yeah. That's sad, it's good. That's, that's actually devotional service. 
because uh, there was a point that I was chanting very nicely and I feel that I'm not doing my holy holy noun service. Well, anyway. anyway, I can't convince you. You keep telling me all about oh, how, how negative everything is. So just chant Hare Krishna and be happy. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you just keep coming back with negativity. Oh, if, you, if you stay negative, whatever I say doesn't mean anything. Stay negative and you become negative. <laughs> Get rid of that negative attitude. The soul by nature is, is, is joyful. The devotional service awakens the joyful nature of the soul. But if you don't believe that, then anything anybody's going to say is not going to change you. Yeah. Some, like these, maybe you like to be sad because you feel good by being sad. There are people who are like that. They enjoy being unhappy. It's called, and it's kind of kind of like a self pity. That's all it is. No, I, I right now I, I will deny that, but I look into it. I take that point to my heart and I see what exactly. I, I can't hear what you're saying. Thank you so much. Anyway, yeah, Prabhupada said, Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. <laughs> and take Prashad, that's two. Those two things will make you happy. <laughs> there is an and in between. <laughs> Charu has got his hand up. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Tanda Pranam, please accept my humble obeisance. Maharaj, uh, I, I'm having some trouble uh, in choosing, always choosing Krishna over Maya. I mean, though intellectually I can understand, uh, I'm carried away by things. Like if in the class, after attending a class or after reading few purports, I know that what is the aim. I should always choose. I have, uh, Krishna I have to be uh, happy with what I have. But say, for example, in the professional life, if I try to attend two meetings in a row and they talk, talk about uh, like growth or um, commitment and something, I can't get carried away. This is just one example. So if we, maybe it's also a peer pressure. Um, I'm trying to always um, choose uh, Krishna, but it just happened intellectually, but I think I am not able to do it. Uh, if you can give me some guidance, it would be helpful. Yeah, just practice. Yeah. Just practice. That's all. When you make a mistake and choose Maya, next time choose Krishna. That's all. The more you choose Krishna, the better it gets. The more you choose Maya, the more you go down. So you learn by your mistakes. Okay. <laughs> what can I say? I just been answering the same question with Jyoti. Okay. Is, you're asking the same question, pretty much, and just using different words. Krishna consciousness is a process. You follow the process, things happen. You get knowledge. You get happiness. You get free from material. Uh, yeah, yeah, go to here. There's a verse, uh, Nina, go to a uh, verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th Canto, 2nd Chapter, uh, verse number, I think it's verse number uh, 42. Try 11 to 42, I think. That's yeah. it. In the Mataji, are you sharing? Yeah. I think that's the verse. Let me see if that's the right verse. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Okay. Somebody read it. Go ahead, Churu, read the verse. Sure. I can now. Mukti Pareshanu Bhavo Pirati Anyatra Desha Trigak Eka Kalaha Pradyamana Seyatashna Tashno Suti Pushti Kshudapayo Translation. 
devotion, direct ex experience of the Supreme Lord and detachment from other things. These three occur, um, occur simul uh, simultaneously for one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the same way that pleasure, nourish nourishment and relief from hunger come simultaneously and increasingly with each bite for a person engaged in eating. Devotion, direct experience of the Supreme Lord and detachment for other things, these things occur simultaneously for one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the analogy is eating. So, yeah. So, the process is there. If you follow the process, you get the benefit. Sure. Thank you, Maharaj. Then my pronouns. Please accept me. I will have a Kindly bless me. I stay in the path. And it's just that uh, I'm always worried. Follow the process and don't listen to your mind. That's all. Mm. Listen to the, the words of the spiritual master. Hari Radha. Mataji, please unmute yourself. We cannot hear you. Hari Krishna Maharaji. Tandavat Pranam. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I just have to say Hare Krishna, nothing else. Okay, great. That's good. Thank you. That's the best thing I heard so far. <laughs> Hare Krishna, and I respond by saying Hare Rama or Hare Radha. <laughs> Jayo. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble uh, dandavats. Uh, uh, I'm just a neophyte. Uh, I just have basic question to ask. So please excuse my agyan here. Uh, can you please uh, help understand what exactly is this Vaishnava Aparat? And I have a follow-up question based on that also, Prabhu. Vaishnava Aparat means to... Uh, there's six ways you can offend the Vaishnava. Bhakti Vinodha Kaur gives the six six ways that one can commit Vaishnava Paran. Um, the most grievous of all Vaishnava Paran is to kill a Vaishnava. Oh my God, Okay. I'm going to give it to you in severity going down lesser and lesser. So the worst one is to kill a Vaishnava. The second one is to blaspheme a Vaishnava. Blaspheme means you look for somebody, the person has good qualities, but you look, you look for some fault and then you broadcast that fault as that person's personality description. So that's blasphemy. The third, the next one down is to become envious of a Vaishnava. The next one down is to become angry with a Vaishnava. The next one down after that is to uh, is to uh, let me see. see. One, two, three, four. Five. I mentioned four. Uh, the next one is to uh, not respect the Vaishnava. And the last one is not to feel happy upon seeing the Vaishnava. That's the least of all the offenses, not feeling happy when you see a Vaishnava. So what do you do? The last one is when you, there is a counteracting element for that because to feel happy, sometimes doesn't happen even if you see a Vaishnava. 
So what do you do? You immediately pay your obeisances and that counteracts the, the, the offense of not feeling happy. So these are the six ways. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has delineated these six ways for how one can offend the Vaishnava. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, I, I've just heard about the past time of uh, Amrish Maharaj and the Durvasamuni. Uh, there it was more of the reason of uh, Durvasamuni being envious of uh, Amrish Maharaja. Right. right. So uh, at my level, I mean, I'm just a neophyte. So um, will there still be the chances of one being envious about others' advancement? And if so, why does it happen while we're uh, practicing Krishna consciousness? And see, how do we kind of, you know, uh, get to a kind of an understanding or get to unlearn our earlier practices of, you know, not, not being envy, envious about others' advancement. Uh, end of the day, we are all kind of, you know, trying to thread on the path of Krishna consciousness with that ultimate goal of life. So how do we be uh, so cautious and thread our lives on this path of Krishna consciousness, Prabhu? Well, you're asking how to get rid of envy. That's the question, right? That's the question, right? You're asking how to be from, from envy, right? That's the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what is envy means that I don't like something that you have or I want, I want what you have and you shouldn't have it. That's one element of envy. So envy is counteracted by, in the scriptures, you have different methods for counteracting the, the element of envy. One is to um, serve the Vaishnavas. If you're feeling envious towards a person, then start doing some service for that person. That will help to counteract that envy, to serve the person rather than keeping that, that negative attitude. That's one. And another one is to learn that Krishna is giving everyone according to whatever they require. He, whatever a person is, is an arrangement by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So if we're envious of another person, then we're actually have our issue is not with the other person, but with Krishna, because we're saying to Krishna, you're making that person have this, and that, therefore you are all wrong and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so your problem is with Krishna, not with the person. You're saying, Krishna, you're giving that person advancement, but that's, uh, that's not right, Krishna. You, you, you did the wrong thing. You don't understand. So your issue is with Krishna, not with that person, because Krishna is giving everyone Everything, both material and spiritual, he's the final say in everything that happens. So uh, stop being envious of Krishna and be happy and satisfied whatever Krishna has given you. That's all. Okay. Learn to be satisfied with whatever you have. Devotees, devotees have to look and say, oh, Krishna has given me so much. He's given me this. He's given me that. He's given me this. He's given me that. And But we're not even seeing that. We're thinking, well, I want that. I don't have that. Or I don't want that person to have that because they don't deserve it. Or uh, so it's, it's just uh, the, raw, the mentality is just be satisfied whatever Krishna gives you. Okay. Krishna, Krishna loves each and every person perfectly and completely. Be satisfied with that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, of course, I understand that the impact of Vaishnava Aparad is very serious. Uh, so the, the, it's so serious that one might even uh, lose all the spiritual credits uh, right. that have been accumulated because of the practice of so many years of Krishna consciousness. So this, uh, this while I understand, uh, I just wanted to ask you one more question respecting to the same Vaishnava Aparad. Can I, Prabhu? Uh, it's Maharaj. 
Dina, what do you think? Can she ask another question? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Nina Mataji. Thanks no, a lot. No, no, no. Thanks to Maharaj. Uh, thanks again, Maharaj. Uh, I just wanted to understand if uh, if uh, if one is not comfortable with the uh, mannerisms or the uh, kind of the external behavior of a devotee, and you want to kind of you know be away, stay away, uh, just because of this, because you're feeling uncomfortable. Will this also fall under the bracket of uh, Vaishnava Parad Maharaj? Well, why do you let somebody else's thoughts disturb you? Because I'm still in your fight stage and I've not got to that kind of a consciousness to understand or be uh, behave normal, right? I've still not reached that stage. So instead no. of kind of you know getting into disturbed distance away, so that you know at least till such time I grow to that level of uh, I mean state of mind. Yeah, I mean I'm comfortable. Fine. I'm not okay. Okay, that's fine. But at the same time, don't criticize. That's at the same feel... time, don't criticize. Of course not. I mean, absolutely, you know, it's just that the, uh, what do you call the uh, uncomfortable uh, feeling, that's it. Absolutely nothing more, neither the other devotee is armed or anything, absolutely giving, nothing. I'm giving you the answer, but you're not hearing my answer. Sorry, sorry, Prabhu. Yeah, you're not listening. So the answer is, yeah, if you feel uncomfortable because of someone else's behavior, and uh, then just distance yourself from that. Fine. Okay. Oh, don't okay. Got it. But that's not uh, Vaishnava Parad, right? Absolutely no. doesn't come under that gamut. No, but you still have you still have to understand deeper what it means to have the proper consciousness. You haven't developed the proper consciousness. Yes. You're just protecting yourself because you, you haven't developed the proper consciousness yet. And the proper consciousness is if, if someone else's faults are disturbing you, then what is it about you that's causing you to become disturbed? That's Bhakti Siddhanta service. Got it, got it. Understand, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, uh, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please have a sense of glory to Shiva Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class and beautiful answers. Thank you so much for your association. Hare Krishna. Namagori. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'm missing Charlotte and all of the wonderful devotees there. Uh, we are missing you too, Maharaj. When are you coming to Charlotte? Um, I'm coming to America in April, so oh. sometime after that. Devotees, any last minute questions? Maharaj is still here. Open your heart, do not hesitate and ask. Maharaj, everybody's sublime with all your wonderful messages. Such a wonderful class. Yeah, we got now. We got 58. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Guru Sushila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, so much food for thought today. Uh, like every class, we have to munch on it again and again and uh, assimilate it uh, by your blessings, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Prabhupada said, I put. The, all of philosophy in, in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and the rest of Bhagavatam is just uh, repeating that same philosophy in different ways. 
Repetition is required. We have a question from Sri Devi. Yes. Sri Devi Mataji, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for yet another wonderful class. I'm sorry I'm not able to turn on my camera. Uh, Guru Maharaj, in the course of your lecture, you said that the scriptures speak in so many ways just for people to understand. It can be direct, it can be indirect in the form of analogies, stories, etc. As you were speaking, I was remembering how Jesus spoke in parables and explained God consciousness in that way. Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, there's different ways to give the message. Parables is one of them. Sutras. You know, Kampana has spoken sutras. Of course, he was a moralist, but he spoke also important knowledge. Yeah, different types of intellectuals present the knowledge in different literary forms. There's some who don't speak so much, but they write. And so there's different, yeah, so parables is one of the things. Speaking in a third person is good also. Oh, there's different ways the scriptures are expressing the same knowledge in different ways. Um, but there is one statement that says truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. Truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Um, I have a request from Jyoti Mataji. Um, she wants to come running and offer her obeisances at your lotus feet. And she's saying, Maharaj, if you could kindly share your journey. <laughs> I'm still on the journey yet. I haven't got there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer, Mara. <laughs> Still going. Trying to stay on the path. But I can tell you a little secret how to make the journey more, more wonderful is Chant, dance, and take for shot. <laughs> Maharaj, you're a great dancer. We saw that here. <laughs> was that in uh, Was that in Naperville? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. It was aesthetic. <laughs> also, in front of the world, spiritual energy. I got the. I somebody gave me the message that. Um, April 19th is the opening of the new temple in April. 
Yes, Maharaj. We are very much looking forward to have, be, having you here. I'm, I'm going to be in the United States, so I'm planning to come. So that's Wonderful, Haribo. Thank you. We have so many grateful messages from so many devotees where Jyoti Mataji, Dipti Mataji, Bhadra Prabhu, they all are offering their obeisances at your Lotus Feet Maharaj. And we have a question from Rajeshwari Patel Prabhuji, if you would like to kindly unmute and pose your question, please. Hi Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj, all glories to all of the devotees. Uh, Maharaj, so Srila Prabhupada has said that he put all of the uh, all of the teachings of the Bhagavatam in the first canto. And I heard that he also said that he put well, all, he of the all the philosophy. He put all the philosophy. All the philosophy, sorry. All the philosophy in the and I heard also he put all the philosophy in the first three chapters of the first canto so no, is it in, in the first canto first the when Prabhupada first put out the first canto he put it out in three volumes so he mm. said I put everything in the first three volumes of the first canto so are we better <laughs> off just continually studying the first canto and trying to go deeper. Just the first three verses in the first canto, first chapter, first canto. Mm. Take you a lifetime to understand those three verses, especially the first verse. Janmad Yashataha, Dharas, Vignas, and Tene Brahmi Hidad, Adi Kapuye. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. The first three verses sum up the entire essence of the absolute truth. The entire, uh, in a very succinct way, the absolute truth is described in these three verses. Is that why Srila Prabhupada gave so many lectures, so many lectures on those first three verses? Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati spoke on the first verse for three consecutive months, every day for two hours, not covering the same points each day. That was in Dhaka, in, West, in East Bengal. Wow. Is that recorded anywhere? Are the transcripts recorded anywhere? I think there is a transcript to that. It's not been verbally recorded. But I think where I might find that. Um, good question. <laughs> but a lot of the writings of, and teachings of Bhakti Siddhanta have been described and transcribed and put out in different journals. There is the Nadia Prakash, there's Sarjana Sarjana Toshini, there are other newspapers and articles. And periodicals and books written by some of his followers. That's a little research you need to do. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Amy. Kanwar Pranam from Maharaj, a beautiful class. I just uh, have a question. I'm her. Uh, where, I mean, I'm like a below a neophyte, but uh, yesterday I was at the gas station, this Aboriginal kid, uh, I live in Canada. So he approached me and he was curious where I'm from, because I'm, I'm from India. And he's very interested in Hinduism to the point that he's doing a talk in his class. I think he's a teenager. Then he went on to ask me the question, uh, you know, when Krishna's birthday, what do you call it? I said, well, Panchramashtami. So he was very curious. So I said, well, based on my guidance from my senior devotees, I understand that we should give them Prabhupada books. 
But so, well, I'll bring you a book and I'll leave it for you here, say, in a few days. But Maharaj, is there anything else I can do? He seems quite interested to the point he said he doesn't kind of very much relate to his own religion. And he's very inspired by uh, Hinduism and he's talking about Diwali and, uh, and those things. So is there something else I can do to help him? Yeah, many things. One is invite him to the temple. Look for a Sunday feast or a festival that's going on, especially some occasion, invite him to the temple during that time. So Maharaj, we're very far away from a temple, like where we live is about eight hours from temple, so he probably wouldn't be able to go there like anytime soon, but yes, I, I'll mention that to him. Thank you. Oh. Turn them on to one of the, you know, what's going on on the uh, on the viral media. Uh, you can give them uh, like here. I have my card here. It says um, centers c e n t r e s dot iscon dot org. Is or Krishna.com. Yeah, turn them on to Krishna.com. That's the best. K R I S H N A dot com. That's the main website of this country. Krishna.com. Thank you, Maharaj. That was enough. So sorry, Maharaj, you seem so fatigued and tired. Uh, can we take some more questions? Is that okay with you? Mr. Rajesh. Yes. Uh, Rajesh Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Di Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Don't, uh, Rajesh, Rajesh, don't just sit there and start giving me all kinds of compliments. Just get, ask a question. Thanks, Maharaj. <laughs> I was going to do that, but I, I've been blown away by all the amazing the never respects and uh, love everyone has for you. So I thought I'd follow in the little, in the, in the massive footsteps. Okay, Maharaj, straight to the question. <laughs> um, so my reading of the Bhagavatam has got a little bit, well, quite a lot behind. And I generally go back to the first canto so much, you know, and I, I'm kind of drawn to the purport so much that often I will stop, think, you know, make some notes, reflect. And I just find myself in this sort of loop when I do read the Bhagavatam I, I don't want to sort of go beyond the first canto so I'm kind of taking a long long time um I wonder that's if you good. have any advice for me Maharaj is that's okay or yeah. if I yeah that's great Prabhupada well, said it takes it takes one month to, each, to understand each verse <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. It's not about how much, it's about quality. That's all. Yeah, read it over and over, study it, discuss it, talk about it with others. Try to understand. I'm not even a quarter of the way through. And I, yeah, yeah and Prabhupada, I just, yeah. Prabhupada gave a very interesting statement. He was talking to, uh, one of his assistants that he was talking, he said, if you understand one page of nectar devotion, you could be fully Krishna conscious. And then he stopped and said, no, not one page, one paragraph. And he said, not even that, even one sentence, you could be fully Krishna conscious. Then he went on to say, not even that one word. If you can understand one word, you can be fully Krishna conscious. And so all this knowledge is dynamic, not static. So yeah, if you're studying in the first canto, then you can eventually preach Krishna consciousness anywhere. You have that working knowledge of that first canto. 
Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, a quick, quick follow-on reflection stroke question, if I may, just, and I think you answered it from uh, earlier uh, questions, Maharaj, that in terms of if we're getting easily disturbed by by others, then the answer is is within. You know, what is it about myself that, that's allowing me to get disturbed by of others? So, I think the answers are in Canto One. Uh, or a part of the answers, or, or at least the philosophy part, is, is there. So, I think I've got to carry on. Uh -huh. That first canto was just saturated with transcendental knowledge. It's just, it's just so full. Especially the second chapter of the first canto. That 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 second chapter alone is. Everything. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. So I think in a few minutes, I'm going to have to switch gears to another concern that I have to do. So uh, I think maybe we can uh, say goodbye until next time. We'll miss you until next time, Maharaj. Please, please, please accept my Dandara Pranam at your lotus feet. My, my message to everyone is now the marathon is on, the Christmas marathon. Everyone should be out there distributing books. Carry books with you. Wherever you meet, give them a book. Uh, yeah, distribute books, distribute books, distribute books. The more you give the knowledge, the more you gain. Okay, so thank you to everyone. Thank you to um, Parijata and the Basinses, and to all the devotees, Lalita and Dina Bandhu, the, uh, the seasoned devotees, who have become disciples of uh, uh, Shamagori and her, her, her two main disciples, Lalita and Dina Bandhu. <laughs> <laughs> they are, you know, without fail, there every week for the last 10 years. <laughs> and thank you for all of you and your questions. Yeah. Uh, this Krishna consciousness is the solution to all the problems and it's the principle of the highest form of happiness. Take it seriously, work at it, never get discouraged. Um, in due course of time, you will start to understand the beauty of Krishna consciousness. It'll become so wonderful that you'll think if nothing else, <laughs> just Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj.